Hey church family, this is a pastor. I'm uh, blessed today to be joined on my left and my right uh, by Bob and Julie. Uh, they are uh, on mission in Kenya uh, in a place called Naomi's Village. And so we want you to hear a little bit about uh, what God is doing there in Kenya, how God is using Bob and Julie, and how God really he, how God has worked in their lives uh, over the years to really, really call them uh, to uh, give up a lot give up a lot of uh, their comfort zone, a lot of what they thought was their future, and really seek what God has. Uh, so Bob, why don't you tell us briefly as a church, um, what is Naomi's Village? Well, Naomi's Village is a children's home that is in a place called Kajabi, Kenya, which is an hour or so outside of Nairobi. Nairobi is the big capital of Kenya. So uh, Naomi's Village was founded in early 2011, and now houses 45 total orphans. Pretty new mission. Now, Julie, as you, uh, as you think about Naomi's Village, what, what's the thing that drives you? Uh, I know it's uh, got kids there now, but r really what do you see as its greatest impact there in Kenya? Mm -hmm. um, I think that the impact is far reaching. It's what we're praying for. We see children who come in who are completely broken um, they've suffered a great de degree of violence and abuse in their life. Um, some of our kids are HIV positive and were um, honestly at death's door before they came in. Um, so for, for me personally, it's been incredible watching the transformation that happens in their life as God does what God does, which is He redeems. Um, so the redemptive work that goes on in their lives has been incredible. We're trying to raise a generation of children who will go out and do the same in Kenya. Kenya is a country that is suffering greatly, even though it's one of the more developed countries in Africa. Um, the poverty there is, is stifling. And so our hope is that these children from Nomi's village will grow up and go out and serve the poor and needy in their own country, that they will be the ones that will bring about true change that happens in Kenya. So the, so the kids that you're hoping to grow up um, now, you're, you're hoping they're gonna be the ones that changes Kenya. Absolutely. That's, that's really, it's not really. Let me, let me ask you, how long have y'all been married? We got married in uh, August of 1991, so this will be the, the 22nd year. 22 years. Yeah. Now, so you get married, and your whole purpose in getting married and your thought for your future in getting married was you're going to go to Kenya, right? <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> tell, tell, us, tell us how God led you, where, where you went to school, what, how sure. you were trained, uh, what you did occupationally before you really sensed God's call on your life. We met at Baylor University in 1987, and I was pre-med, and, and our whole focus at that time was for me to get into medical school and, and to get trained as a physician. And so I moved down to Galveston, got accepted to medical school there, and, and eventually got trained as an orthopedic surgeon. And Julie was with me through that whole process. We got married in 1991, as I said. And uh, after we finished medical school, and residency, we moved up to the Dallas area, and I settled into a practice in Louisville Flower Mound, mm -hmm. and got saved in '99. So mm -hmm. before that time, my whole my whole objective was just to follow the American dream and and to work our way um, through that. And both of us um, would have told you that we were about materialism, about basically getting wealthy and um, having children and and getting a big house and basically all those things that we had thought that we wanted to to seek and find had not brought us peace and then both of us in 1999 committed our lives to follow Jesus Christ and everything changed it wasn't like a typical thing where you raise your hand in church and and uh, make a commitment that gets layered onto the rest of the American dream everything changed and we began to um, change everything about how we spent our money and time. And over the next few years, God started to pull at us a little bit and tug at us. And in 2001, I went on a mission trip to the Philippines. And Julie, when I came back, I was changed. Julie said, that's great. Glad you went on that trip, but you go, I'll pray. I'm not interested in going on a mission trip. She was still really afraid. Next year, I went to Brazil and went on a mission trip on an Amazon um, team that was basically on a boat together and I was the team physician and Julie again said 
you go, I'll pray. I can't do that. That's crazy. <laughs> On both those trips, I saw how the gospel uh, was penetrating into remote cultures and God was using his word and his people to impact the poor and needy. And I got to be part of that. I got to use what God had gifted me with to, to help people to impact the world. And it was amazing. And I felt like God was wooing me out of my comfort zone. And I was unaware, couldn't understand why Julie would not want to do that as well. So in 2003, finally, after some things that happened in a church we were going to together in Arlington, which I'll let her tell you about, we went on our first trip to, to Kenya. I'd like her to express that, how that happened. So Julie, in that process, what was, what was going on with you? Um, well, I felt like I was perfectly content with the life we had. Um, we had a great church we were going to. We were um, leading in our church. We, um, you know, we were active Christians. And we had a great house. Our kids were going to a good school. I really felt content and felt very afraid about leaving the U.S. Um, felt very afraid about encountering a life very different from mine. Felt completely inadequate to be able to step into any of that. So for me, um, I felt the easiest thing was just to tell Bob that I would be the good wife and pray for him and let him go anytime the Lord called him to go, but I was not going to go anywhere. And so we um, went to a church service at the church we were going to in Arlington. It was a worship service on a Wednesday night. And our pastor after worship said that he wanted to share some things he felt like he saw while he was worshiping. And he had never done this before, so this was a bit unusual for our church and definitely unusual for me. He, um, in the process, spoke to a couple of people and then he asked Bob and I to stand up. And he told us that while he was worshiping, he saw Bob and I most definitely together in a warm tropical climate ministering to people and we were wearing safari clothing. So it was pretty specific what he said, um, and then that was all he said. He's, and it was, there was no, thus saith the Lord, or get on a plane and go to Africa tomorrow. It was really just this quiet message that he followed up with saying, perhaps you were in safari clothing because it meant that you'll be doing what people do on a safari, which is they go out from their home base and then they come back in. Mm. And those were the words I needed to hear in my heart was that, Julie, if I take you out, I'm going to bring you back home again. Mm -hmm. So on the way home, um, I told Bob, perhaps we should consider going on a mission trip. <laughs> now, our children, Emily and Will, they were very young at the time. They were, they were um, three and four. Three and four. Yeah. So I thought perhaps we should go on a mission trip sometime meant like 10 years from now. Perhaps we should consider <laughs> going on a mission trip within the year. And um, we found ourselves in Kajabi, Kenya, serving for a month. Wow. So God's kind of changed your heart, and uh, it wasn't necessarily that you didn't want to honor God. You just felt like part of your job was to be a mom, raise mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. support your husband as he went out on mission. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you ended up in Kenya that first time, and what did God begin to do uh, in y'all's hearts? Well, we went there with Samaritan's Purse, and uh, I was an orthopedic surgeon when we would go on these trips, and, and so our trips were 2003, and then each year afterwards, um, up, up through 2007, we went, and I would serve for a month to two months a year. And as we were there, we were living on a mission station, we were provided housing, and I would work the whole time doing orthopedic surgery, and Julie started to get out into the community, off of this comfortable mission station, relatively comfortable by... Uh, mission terms, and she got out in the community and began to see the poor and suffering um, people that existed there. And she saw nine or ten children in a home being taken care of by a grandmother because both parents had died of AIDS. And she saw um, children walk up and down the hill to terrible schools with no shoes and or with shoes that were torn up and, and having had no breakfast. And she just went and got involved with AIDS clinics and um, outreaches to children that, that were HIV positive. And she would come back and tell me all these things and show me the pictures and they were just heartbreaking. And on our second trip there, she told me, Bob, I think that from what I've seen that God is asking me to make a response and 
I feel like he's called us to get involved with the care of orphans somehow, and I don't know what that means. And here was this woman who didn't want to go on a mission trip now telling me this crazy thing. And I said, I don't know what to think about that, honey, but um, let's pray about that, and let's, let's begin to think about what God's called us to do. And it wasn't any longer than just about a week later, we were in a vehicle in Kenya with a Kenyan couple, and they, she, they, they wanted to know more about what we were talking about. I kind of mentioned it to them, and they said, really? And we have the same calling, and they took us down to this piece of land that they owned, five acres down in the valley from where this mission station existed on the hillside. And they showed us this five acres, and we prayed over it. That was in early 2005. We didn't know what we were praying about. We just, we just had this concept that somehow that piece of land was going to be used to help take care of orphans. There was a little two-room house on it and a well that was 40 feet deep. And they told us that the year before, the family that was living in that little two-room house had an 18-month-old child that had fallen down the well and died. Mm -hmm. And that was the history of this land. It was under a prolonged gr drought, and so it looked dead. And the two of us didn't really feel much sense that it was a good piece of land to help orphans on. We did not know we were moving to Kenya at that time. We did not think that we were going to build a children's home on that land. It just didn't uh, seem possible. And we went back to the U.S. and came back each year for three more years, mm -hmm. or two more years, mm -hmm. yeah. And it was during those preceding, or those coming years that we began to develop a calling to, to do more on that piece of land. Mm -hmm.